Nå sitter jeg sammen med Will Rogers, som er driver med horsemanship, og som har funnet en helt spesiell teknikk til å kommunisere med hestene, og få dem til å gå gjennom store presenninger, pakke dem inn i plast, altså det er helt utrolig hva han får til, og det å overføre det til alle hester, at vi alle kan få til dette. Så so Will Rogers, how did this all start? It's funny how you get forced into certain things and then it actually ends up working out for you in the end. So, for example, in Australia, if you want to make a living, you can't just train all the horses you'd like to train. People want to send you the horse that's not working out for them. It's got a problem. It's, it needs to be started under saddle. In Australia particularly, I think uh, people's horsemanship is respected and developed uh, much more so, I think, than, than other countries because it's sort of a necessity thing. You know, there's... Um, uh, you, to make a living as a horse trainer, you can't just ride top show jumpers or dressage horses or western horses. You've got to be able to train all sorts of horses. And so in that process, um, difficult horses are difficult because of people mainly. So, you know, a horse might have so stronger instincts or be more complicated, but once they have interactions with people and those interactions don't go well, which people don't intentionally mess a horse up. But sometimes that happens because the horse reacts in a certain way and the person doesn't know what they should do and they see it as a threat and lose their temper or... Working with these difficult horses has taught me that it's really important to understand how to train a horse for the future and build them up in a way that you've got a, a, something positive to go back to. An equivalent to see in horses would be making sure that the horse is in the position you'd like them to be in so that the horse knows where they should be so that's like the manners thing but it's also actually giving the horse um, uh, some parameters that are safe so I'm very particular about having the horse as nose on my shoulder and when I walk forward that horses know they need to speed up to my shoulder if I stop they need to like auto level and if I go backwards they need to go backwards um, to that sort of sweet spot so that the horse has somewhere where they always know where they have to be so no matter your environment no matter your situation that gives the horse some security in knowing where they should be and a focus point so if you don't have a focus point the horse will be here and there and stressed and screaming and knocking you over and something happens and the horse will be you you'll lose connection with them just because you might pay five million Norwegian krona for a horse doesn't mean that that horse is going to work for you because why would they you know why would a horse work for someone who's not worthy of of um of being in a leadership position so to speak so building the horses up so that they understand what you want and so when a difficult situation arises you've got many tools that you can use to get your horse back with you, um, get their focus, because like you might be in the warm up and just before you go in, something catastrophic happens. If you can't get your horse back within 10 seconds, you're gonna go into the ring and everything's over. You've traveled from Germany to Norway and it's all over because someone crashed the tractor into the wall just before you went in, <laughs> okay? And the thing is, this is a normal complaint. Oh, my horse got tense, my horse got tense, mm. my horse got... Yeah, no shit, it got tense. Horses get tense. Can you get it back? Have you prepared your horse so that you can get them back quickly? You can't stop them from being horses, but you can teach them to be the best version of themselves. And how do you do that? What, the way I look at the, the setting up the training is the culture is, okay, I want the horse to be thinking about being where I would want them to be all the time. Not just when I feel like it, not when it's mm. convenient all the time. Now, that's not like a control freak thing. That's more like a teaching the horse to take responsibility for um, maintaining a certain thing. And that can be just simply being with you. When you stop and relax, they stop and relax. When you're riding them, when you say forward, they stay, go forward. And you're not kicking them all the time, they're staying forward. If you're um, asking them to concentrate, that they concentrate. So normally when a horse gets distracted, they fix their mm -hmm. focus on something. When you ask a part of their body to move, that is... I tend to think of like the opposite. If the horse is looking over there, I try and yield him his body and take his head the opposite way. 
just look at the camera mm. for a second. If you were to look at the camera, I could do this, mm. <laughs> or I could I could push you the other way, mm. or I could do I could do all sorts of things to constructively interfere with your focus until your mind goes, "What do you want?" Mm. And I say, "Yeah, that's what I want. I just want you to focus on me." Mm. Okay. The term yield is essentially um, the horse willingly moving and adjusting their body with a positive attitude. That's what we're looking for. So for example, if I ask the hindquarters or the forequarters or backing up, I don't want the horse to just move. I want them to move until they uh, get softness in their body. So I continue, I, sometimes I might, with some horses, I might back up for 20 meters until they soften their body. Mm -hmm. Because when they soften their body, it's when they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. When they're tense and like this, it's because they're defending themselves against your aid, okay? So whenever you use your aids and the horse doesn't respond correctly, you try and continue to a point where the horse lets go and moves themselves, okay? So that's how you get their focus. And so for example, when a horse is more trained and they lose it, you say, hey, oh, thank you, good. Rubbing and releasing and, uh, and doing nothing, asking for nothing is that, is what they want, you know, they, they want peace, you know, essentially. So you've got a pretty, like, calm, sort of natural energy and positivity. Uh, I don't know you very well, but I don't know how, how high your energy gets or how low it gets and how much you can control it and project it. So if a horse is being difficult, I might have to come in here and be strong like that, and as soon as they respond correctly, I need to come back down here and go, yeah. it's okay. Because there, there are moments where the horse escalates and it's out of control, and most people go, <gasps> And of course, when you take that, you're projecting nervous energy at an explosive mm -hmm. reactive horse. Okay, so if you meet someone who's a really good rider, generally you'll find that they've got an energy about them because they know how to use it. They may not be thinking that that's what they're doing, but they're doing that anyway. Like the natural riders are feeling and doing things and not thinking about, whereas I tend to think, you can't just be natural, I don't think. You you have to be aware, and to get the best out of yourself and your horse, you have to be keeping check on that. So when we see your show, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like that I could never do that with mm -hmm. my horse. You know, can you do That's that? That's the aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like make people feel that they can't do it. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, I'll tell you the thing is, right. The horse I did here in the show the last couple of days, he is one of the most difficult horses I've ever had. And, I, and I'm not, uh, I was very stressed leading up to this to do this. Now this show that I'm doing this afternoon is with my own horse and it'll be more relaxed for me. Um, but he was also very calm. Yeah, he, he was. He did it perfectly. Yeah, he was, but um, uh, he's had a very troubled pass. So he's got really big triggers because he's got trauma, so there's a problem when you know certain things and you can't unknow them. Mm -hmm. So I know that if you watch in the warm up and you see uh, what I see, and this is because you you look at things through a, few, a lens, I see all the negative experiences accumulating in people, like they're riding around and all they're thinking is like, oh, I just try and ride around in the arena, and the horse is like, oh, he tried to ride me into that horse, and now that horse is kicked up kick sand up in my face and is like, yeah, I don't know if I can go near other horses and now I'm really stressed and, you know, it's sort of accumulating, accumulating and, um, and like, that stresses me because I feel like if I had to train that horse and have it how I would want it, you've just damaged that horse again and again and again and once you've got enough traumas, you can't rely on them. You've got to be constantly, like with him, um, I'm trying to rebuild some knowledge into him that he can perform and be confident and he was really great um, but you know he could just easily be terrible and do you think it's important for everyone to work from the ground as well with the horse yeah I think it's important to you'll hear a lot of times you'll hear people say this they'll say I've got this young horse he was so sweet and now mm. it's like oh really <laughs> and now some things are going wrong what a surprise why is that, I wonder? Is it because the horse had no knowledge and he was sweet when he knew nothing and now he's learnt the wrong things and he's learnt no good things before that, he just didn't know what was going on. Now you've got a problem. 
and that's happening like it's just like a record playing oh will i've got this horse oh yeah sure you got this horse it's the same story over so and over. what do you do i encourage people to actively seek out how they can improve things like all the things you're talking about before about how how to pick the horse's feet out you know how do you pick a horse's feet up do you manually lift the horse's leg off the ground and try and reef it off the ground or do you ask them touch them to where they lift their own foot up and then put the foot down when they're relaxed and how do you walk from the stable to the tie-ups does the horse ignore you drag behind you run past you is the horse stressed is the horse relaxed how does the horse stand in the tie-ups <clears throat> so I think I want the horse to pick their feet up themselves when I go to clean their feet up I want them to stand still and be relaxed I want to be able to put the halter on I want them to be standing and waiting when I walk they walk when I stop they stop when we go to the tie-ups we clip up they stand relax them down in the neck good we quietly brush them saddle them they stay patient we go to the next thing and so every single part is positive the young horses I have you and they just they just don't do anything wrong they don't say no they don't uh, their horses still they'll get a little bit scared here and there but they're like oh okay it's okay and how do you get the horse to know that you're the leader um, as far as with the leadership mean what you say try and understand where the horse is at and what's going on and be firm when you need to be and really soft and smooth all the rest of the time. The horses, horses don't respond well to aggressive people and they don't respond well to high energy people or weak people. So if you try and cancel out aggression, weak, you know, weak, low energy and what fear. What do you mean by weak? Like, um, okay, that's nice to okay. okay, so for example, if you came at me and I went, you know, like this, you're showing weakness. So in your body language, like, see how I'm in a position here where I'm not neither aggressive or passive. I'm sort of in a neutral state, but if I wanted to come and be strong and intense, I could. And if I wanted to be submissive and take myself down and away from you, I can too. The, I'm sort of half artist, half competitor in my mind. I'm split and I, I think, you know, if you go too much, uh, like focus on competition, you get too technical and too performance based and you forget the horse and then it gets ugly and it gets messy and um, if you get too artistic and too emotional and the connection with the horse you also get too far away from reality. I think we just forget why we're doing it. A lot of people forget why it's not just about the fancy helmets and the shiny boots and 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 being you know at a show. I think people got to remember stay true to the horse and and uh, that presenting them as a beautiful creature as they are and that's what my teachers have sort of taught me and I realize now it's not how much you do with the horse it's how you do it. Fantastic. Hmm. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. And uh, det är er så intressant att höra om uh, hur man kan vara med hästarna och det att vara uh, konsistent som det på gott norsk <laughs> med dem är er, uh, viktigt. Sometimes just them and a the guitar singing it just sort of brings the house down kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay, thank you. Absolutely.